This is a Sans coin. 10 years ago, this used to be a massive humble brag because you can only win this if your team win the capstone challenge at the end of a challenging Sans training. And these are books from four Sans training and JX certificates that I've done throughout the years. And one of them changed my life in 2017. That one JX certificate helped me land a cyber analyst job where I quickly got promoted to be a team lead for a cybersecurity incident response team where we were responding to cyber attacks against Australia's national broadband network. These were pretty serious attacks against critical infrastructure. Now fast forward to today and I'm really sad to see that the value of SANS training and JX certificates have declined throughout the years. However, up to this day you still see some SANS and JX certificates listed in job descriptions. So the question is should you do SANS and JX certificates, especially that some of them cost upwards of $10,000? And why do I and other hiring managers and seasoned cybersecurity professionals think that the value of the SANS and JX certificates have declined. So to explain all of this to you, I've broken down this video into four parts. First, I'm gonna tell you whether SANS certificates are worth it and if yes, which ones should you do? Because there are so many SANS certificates out there. And then I'm gonna explain why I think the value of the SANS Institute and JX certificates have declined throughout the years. And then I'm gonna show you a much, much better alternatives to SANS and JX training that will give you more value for a fraction of the cost. I will literally give you alternatives to each SANS certificate so you can do it with a different provider for a fraction of the cost. And finally, for those who still want to do SANS certificate, I will share with you how I managed to do four SANS certificate without paying full price for those. There is actually a way to do them cheaper. But the question that we're gonna answer in part one is, are they still worth it? Now in the early 2000s and even the 2010s, we actually didn't have a lot of options when it came to proper cybersecurity training that included hands-on labs. For example, if you wanted to learn anything about incident response or digital forensics and even penetration testing, we didn't have a lot of options. We only had ISC2 and CompTIA and to be honest with you, everyone in the cybersecurity industry know that these providers are just pure theory. If you wanted to learn hands-on, if you wanted to work in a security operation center, SANS was the only provider and therefore it's a no-brainer to any cybersecurity professional that SANS and JX certificates were absolutely worth it simply because there was nothing else. Now mind you at the time there wasn't actually a lot of SANS and JX certificates. If you look online now there is simply way too many SANS certificates and honestly I lost track. I get questions from people asking me whether this SANS certificate is worth it or this JX exam is worth it and the truth is some of them I simply don't know. They seem to be creating new trainings every single day. Therefore if you wanted to to do a SANS training and get the JX certificate with it, then I recommend to stick to only a few of them. Now, historically, one of the beginner friendly ones that used to be taught by Dr. Eric Cole, who is an absolute fantastic instructor and has contributed a lot to our industry, was the GCIH, which is the JX Incident Handler. Now, to earn this certificate, first you need to understand that we have SANS, which is a training institute, and then we have JX certificates. They are essentially the same company, but technically you can just do the JX exam, pass the exam, and earn the certificate certificate without doing the SANS training. However, the SANS Institute are smart people because one thing you need to know about this exam is that they are actually open book. So they allow you to bring all the books and printed material that you want to take with you into the exam, but you're not allowed to do Google search or access the internet. And the second and most important thing is that the exam is designed that it's really, really hard, nearly impossible to pass it without doing the SANS training. So what we needed to do is do the SANS training, get the books with us, and even within the books, they didn't include an index so you couldn't just quickly search and find the answer. So we created what we used to call index. I'll show you some examples. So here is a book. And as you can see, I have these marks here in the book. So I summarized what each page is telling me. So for example, this is the G-Pen or, or JAC penetration testing. And I have a mark that says Netcat, Nessa. So these are names of tools. So when I get a questions about Nessas, for example, I'll simply open the page and I'll be able to access the information. Now, if you don't have the books or if you didn't attend the training, it's really, really hard to pass the exam. Therefore, you actually need to do the SANS training. Now, if you look on their website, you will see that the price of the SANS training is actually atrocious. Back in my days, it used to be $4,000 and $5,000, but nowadays I think it's seven or even 8,000 US dollars. So in Australia, that converts to over 10,000 Australian dollars. Now this is crazy and this is a huge price. However, it does come with a lot of advantages. So for example, what you're paying for is being in the classroom, having access to world-class instructors. In the early 2000s and the 2010s, SANS instructors were actually super 
superstars in the cybersecurity industry. A lot of them have written standards and papers and created things that we still use to this day in the cybersecurity industry. They were also active practitioners, so a lot of them had their own consulting companies, so they knew what they were doing. So what you're paying for is being in the classroom, asking the instructors, but also the books. Remember, that was a time where the knowledge wasn't out there. So we needed that material, we needed that books and these methodologies and access to these tools. And therefore, the price is you simply paying for the fact that the Sands Institute and their team have collected a large amount of information, summarized it for you in a digestible manner. And yeah, they were a monopoly. You simply couldn't get that information anywhere else. Things have changed now. And the final thing that you need to know is that those prices were targeting organizations. For example, the company is meant to pay for this so the student can attend the training. Now, I personally wasn't lucky to work in companies that paid for my training, but I know a lot of individuals who worked in government and sometimes the army where they get certain amount of money that they can invest in training. So that was really their target market. This is no longer justifiable today, but that's just a bit of history for you. Now, if you get a chance to do sense training, like I said, GCIH is really good. It's a great entry level beginner friendly certificate that covers a lot of the incident handling process that we deal with in a cybersecurity operation center, but it also covers some foundational knowledge. Whereas if you're someone who have a little bit more experience, let's say you've been working in cybersecurity for two years, you've got some knowledge, then I don't recommend GCIH, but I recommend the GCFA. This is the JAC Forensic Analyst Certificate. This is the one that I've personally done, and I think it's a phenomenal, fantastic cert. It teaches you advanced incident response. So the training is designed in such a way where it takes you through a week-long scenario of a company that was already hacked, and you're simply performing digital forensic and backward analysis to contain, analyze, and respond to that cyber incident. And within that, you learn things like like in-memory forensics and some hard drive forensics. Now, just be warned, this is one of the challenging ones. So I'd say it's an intermediate certificate. However, if your company's paying for it, then it's absolutely worth it. It will take a lot of work, but trust me, you will learn a lot. Now, there is a certificate called GCFE, which is also another forensic analyst or examiner certificate. People used to think that the GCFE is a prerequisite to the GCFA. However, I didn't do the GCFE. I don't believe it's a prerequisite. You can safely do the GCFA without having done the GCFE. The GCFE focuses more on hard drive forensics. So if you're someone who works in forensics and it's part of your day-to-day -day job, then it could be worth it for you. However, it's not one that I recommend if you're not in that world. Now, the third JAC certificate that I recommend is for individuals who are already penetration testers. There are some advanced level penetration testing certificates. Now, the one that I did was GPIN, which is an entry-level penetration testing certificate. And I only did it because I got a chance to do it for a small price, which I'll show you how to do at the end of this video, but I didn't found that training to be particularly useful because I've done the EJPT. So the knowledge from the EJPT was far superior to the GPN knowledge. So for me, it was a walk in the park. I didn't learn a lot. However, if you're someone who's an experienced penetration tester, then I recommend you do the GPXN. And also there are other specialized penetration testing topics. For example, there is a penetration testing set for Android and iOS. SANS have a certificate for everything. So if you're someone who is already working working as a penetration tester and somehow your work is paying for pen testing certificates, then pick one of those specialized ones or the advanced ones. Don't do the G-Pen, I don't think it's worth it. Now, in all honesty, those are the only SANS certificates that I recommend that you do if your work is paying for it. Now, having said that, all SANS training is of high quality. So please understand, I'm not telling you the other trainings are not good. I'm just telling you those are the ones that will give you the most bang for your buck, assuming you're not the one paying for it. Which brings me to part two of this video. Why is the SANS and JAC training declining, even though the quality is still high. Now, if I'm completely honest, this actually makes me a little bit sad because I've been in this industry for so long and I know the value and contribution that the SANS Institute and the SANS instructor have made to this industry. I simply wouldn't be in my position if it wasn't for the SANS training and the SANS instructors. And some of my best friends are still SANS instructors. However, the fact remains, the value of SANS and JAC is declining for a number of reasons. The first one is a lot of the superstar instructors and the innovative who were innovative and contribute to the industry have simply left the SANS Institute. They moved on, they're doing different things now. And yeah, a lot of them had some things to say about SANS internally. That simply doesn't concern me. As a student and as someone who wants to learn cybersecurity and work in the cybersecurity industry, all I know is these instructors have left. Now the new instructors are still good, but sorry, it's not the same. 
things have changed. And the second reason is, as I said in the beginning of this video, there are simply so many SANS training courses out there. The last SANS training course that I did was GSTRT, which is about leadership. And if I'm completely honest with you, I don't think it was good. The instructor was great, the material was okay, but it wasn't worth the money. Even though I only paid $1,500 for it, I thought it wasn't worth it. None of the information was new, all of it was out there. And I'm telling you, when it comes to cybersecurity, those management training courses aren't worth it. But that's not only it. As I said, there is a SANS training course for everything. For example, there are endless cloud security SANS training courses. And I honestly don't think they are worth it because you can and should learn that information from the vendors themselves. So do something like AWS Security or Microsoft Azure Security Engineer. Those are a lot better than the ones that you will do in SANS. Now, someone might disagree with me and that's perfectly fine. I know that the SANS training in cloud is still good, but honestly, it's not worth $10,000. You can do the vendor training from Microsoft and Amazon and you can practice yourself and learn everything without selling your organs. And finally, honestly, the price is not justifiable. This one is obvious. However, the price kept increasing year on year. And in the past, yes, SANS was a monopoly. There was nowhere else for you to get that level of information. However, today, there are simply much, much better cybersecurity training providers that will give you hands-on practical training that reflects the market, but also for a fraction of the cost. When I did my GCFA, training it was practical in the sense we analyzed files from a company but it wasn't really labs there was a little bit of a practical component and the books were good in the sense they showed you how to use certain tools but it was up to you to set up the tool and practice on your own for gcfa i remember i used volatility to do in-memory forensic and it was great and i ended up using it at work but nowadays this same information is available from other providers where you get access to a lab you can follow these labs you can do capture the flags and you can get really good at these tools without paying $10,000. Which brings me to part three of this video where I will show you training courses that you can do that will give you the same value of the SANS training courses that I recommended earlier. Now starting with the very beginning, SANS actually have a training and it's an old one called G6. This was basically an introduction to cybersecurity, really similar to something like CompTIA Security Plus. Simple definitions. I remember big companies, they used to send their CIO or sometimes even CEO to do these just so they can learn what cybersecurity is. Now, my recommendation to you is to actually do the Google Cybersecurity Cert. It covers pretty much the same topic, but it also gives you some hands-on lab to learn Linux, Python, and MySQL. The material is better and you get 30% discount to do CompTIA Security Plus. So when you combine CompTIA Security Plus with Google Cybersecurity Cert, that combination, in my opinion, is actually so much better than GSEC and it's so much cheaper. In fact, Coursera does so many discounts, so make sure to check the link in my description box because I keep updating it for any discounts that they release. Now the second cert, which is JAC GCIH, the incident handler one, you will see that with the knowledge that you gained from Security Plus and Google Cyber Security Cert, you actually covered a lot of the material that's also in the GCIH. But to properly learn cybersecurity incident response, then the following providers will give you much better value. So you can do Let's Defend SOC Analyst Pathway or Try Hack Me SAL1 or Hack the Box CJCA. Those certificates will actually teach you cybersecurity incident response and how to work in a SOC and will give you so much more value than the GCIH. I'm sorry, but the amount of practical hands-on knowledge in those certificates far exceed the GCIH. GCIH was good at the time. It was great because we had no alternatives, but things have changed. And yeah, the price of those certificates is around $400 or $500, which is a lot cheaper than $10,000. Now the third one, SANS actually have so much GRC training, which isn't really GRC. They call it controls training and you can browse through it. Unfortunately, those training courses are new and they don't give you any practical skills. Save your money and do GRC Mastery where we cover all of those topics combined and we actually give you some practical reports from companies that you can practice with. We cover all the frameworks that you need like NIST Cybersecurity Framework, CIA Triad, and you even come out of it a certified ISO 27001 Lead Auditor. And GRC Mastery now is an exemplar global recognized training partner and TPEX, so you get that global recognition for a fraction of the price. Now, the third one is penetration testing and ethical hacking. Now, it goes without saying oh, offensive security or SCP is still the gold standard for penetration testing. However, for the more beginner ones like GPEN, for example, I recommend you do INE EJPT. As I said earlier, EJPT is so far superior to the GPEN, you will get practical hands on and you will actually learn a lot. Another good alternative for a beginner level penetration testing certificate is Try Hack Me P1. It's practical, it's hands on. And it's a fraction of the price of SANS GPIN. 
Now for the more advanced certificates from SANS, the penetration testing one, then from INE you can do ECPPT or from Hack the Box you can do CPTS and of course you have Offensive Security or SCP. Combine those and you will get much much better value than SANS certificates and again at a fraction of the price. Now when it comes to my favorite certificates from SANS as I said this is the GCFA which is the Forensic Analyst and even the GCFE which is the Forensic Examiner. These ones I would personally replace with Cyber Defender CCD. I have actually done both and I can tell you Cyber Defender CCD is much much harder and so much better than GCFA. You will learn a lot more, you will get to practice a lot more and it's a lot cheaper. Now another good alternative will also be Hack the Box CDSA. It's practical, it's hands-on, it's also harder than GCFA and a lot cheaper at the same time. You can't go wrong with these certificates and again if you do all of those certificates that I recommended from beginning to end all of them will be cheaper than one SANS training course which is really good for you if you're trying to land your first cybersecurity and you're starting from zero today. That was not my experience. I had to do things the hard way, but I also found a way to do them cheaper, which is what I'm going to cover in part four of this video, where I show you how to do these certificates cheaper. Now I'll admit the first SANS training that I did, I actually paid full price. I saved a lot of money and the problem was the particular course that I wanted to do, which is GCIA, that's the intrusion analyst training course. It wasn't happening in my city, so I also had to save up to try to a different city and pay for accommodation and food and I'm not gonna lie it was really painful to pay this much money for one training course however it was extremely valuable I learned so much and it actually helped me progress in my cybersecurity career now the problem with that particular training is that it was focused on intrusion detection and intrusion prevention it highlighted tools like bro and snort which made it really difficult because those tools aren't really beginner friendly but the irony is on the job that I got I had the chance to work with IPS and IDS but the tools had a graphical interface so the intrusion detection system and prevention system I didn't need to write any codes for bro or snort which unfortunately led me to forget most of the stuff that I learned from GCIA and I strategically removed it from my resume because I didn't want anyone to ask me about it and I didn't want to look like a fraud that I don't know what I'm talking about so I simply removed it and I cut my losses now in hindsight it was actually a good investment I made my money back because the jobs that I got paid me a little bit more so in hindsight it was a good investment However, the one that literally changed my life was the GCFA and that one I used the work study program. The work study program from the SANS Institute I highly recommend you apply to. This is a chance for you to help the SANS instructor run the training. So what I did is I did the unboxing of the books, I did the labeling, I took feedback form from the students, I helped with the projector. So I did all of these things to help the instructor run and in return they gave me a chance to do the training for $1,500. That was the price back then. When you apply to the work study program make sure to check the price to see if it's something that you're interested in they are actually highly competitive so i used to apply every single year until one year i got lucky and i got selected so that was the way that enabled me to do a lot of sense training cheap once i was selected once they ended up selecting me for two more training courses that was the gpen and the gsdrt now you actually don't get a choice you apply when you apply to the work study program you select a bunch of them and then you get randomly chosen for the one where they need you and sometimes you get chosen for a different city so you're supposed to cover your travel cost now we used to do that we used to pay for that because we didn't have a choice it was either that or we don't plan at all however now you have a choice so if you calculate 1500 plus travel plus accommodation plus food all of that money let's say it comes to two thousand dollars you can actually finish an entire roadmap in my videos for less than two thousand dollars but the way we thought about it is that it's an investment you pay that money and then you get a high paying job where you recover all of that money so that was the plan and that's what we did and finally SANS now have a women in security scholarship so this is something that you can look into where you can simply do the training for free and if you get a chance to do a SANS training for free please take that opportunity you will learn a lot there is value in being in a classroom and learning from a good instructor and meeting people in the industry now when you do training courses and certifications there is a high chance that you will run into a big problem that a lot of people who are trying to land their first cybersecurity run into in fact we had three people in my discord server post at the same time with the exact same problem they've done training courses and then they applied to jobs but they got rejected so they thought the problem was their resume so they posted asking for a resume review 
and I gave them all the exact same answer. They actually made classic mistakes that everyone who's trying to break into cybersecurity make. Now to answer them, I actually summarized all those problems into this video. It's really important that you check it out because there is a high chance that you will make that same mistake. So make sure you watch it till the end so that all your hard work pays off and you end up landing your first cybersecurity job. Check it out and I'll see you there.